Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. This is our interview show, and today's guest is Coach Jerry Moore, former App State head coach, and I am absolutely thrilled to welcome him on today. And I'm also excited to announce that that we are back with our interview podcast. And so uh, we're going to roll these out in the in the coming weeks and months, and, and we're excited to, to talk to some incredible people on this show uh, about their faith. And, and so, of course, on Tuesdays, that's when we release our weekly devotional podcast. And so we encourage you to continue to, to listen to that. And, and that's where we parallel the current sports story to life and faith. And so we're going to continue to do that. And now we're, we're bringing back our, our interview podcasts as well. And years ago, I had Coach Jerry Moore on my radio show. And, and so great to have him back on. And a, a couple months ago, I had the opportunity to play golf with, with Coach. And, and that was a ton of fun. Uh, we, we've done a, an FCA event together. Uh, I've heard him speak at a church. And so all the, the, the time I've, I've heard him or been around him, He's he's one of the best. There, there's no doubt about it. Not not just the best coach. I'm talking about best people. Uh, he's funny. He's awesome. And so this is uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun for you to listen to today. And and so this podcast is produced by Unpacking It Ministries. And so if you're new to this show, uh, you can check out our website unpackingit.com and and find out more about our email devotional that goes out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, also check out Fantasy Football Fellowship and other resources that we have for sports fans. After you listen to today's show, we hope that you will share it, leave comments or reviews, whether you're watching or listening, you know, like it on uh, YouTube and leave a comment on YouTube or, or wh whatever podcast platform you're on, uh, leave a review and rate it. And we, we really appreciate that. And that's a big help for us. So I also want to mention an upcoming event uh, if you've listened to the podcast, you've heard me talk about it the last couple of weeks, and Coach Moore is coming on to talk about that today in, in more uh, detail, but it's called the third annual golf event, the Coach's Invitational for High Country Caregivers, and, and so it's the, the third annual Coach's Invitational. It's taking place May 19th and 20th at Elk River Golf Course, uh, and so encourage you to check out the link in the show notes, and, and again, Coach is going to talk a lot about that today, and so we're excited to, to team up and partner with High Country Caregivers. I uh, was able to, to play golf with Jacob and Coach Moore a couple of months ago, and so this partnership formed and, and thrilled about it. So really, really cool. So let's jump in, and let me do a quick bio for Coach Moore. He was the head coach at Appalachian State from 1989 to 2012, where he won three national championships. 10 conference championships and is in the college football hall of fame throughout his career. He was also a head coach at North Texas state and Texas tech and was an assistant at SMU, Nebraska and Arkansas. He was the head coach when app state beat Michigan, which still is the greatest upset in college football history. One of the greatest upsets in sports history. And so as an alum, he is the legend. He's the man. But more importantly, he is a wonderful man of God, a deep faith. He's a husband and a father. And so let's jump right in. Here's my interview with Coach Moore. Coach Moore, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for being with us here on the Unpacking It podcast. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Absolutely. Awesome. I like to hear it. That's what I like to hear. So the last time we were together, we were playing golf. And well, I was pretending to play golf, but you were playing golf. So you've got a great golf game. How how, how you been playing lately? I played yesterday, as a matter of fact, for the first time in about three or four months. And uh, actually have improved a little bit. So uh, I'm excited. There you go. What's the key? Now I'm going to talk myself out of some games. <laughs> That that's awesome. Well, so as far as beyond golf, what other kind of hobbies and activities are a part of your life these days? Most of it comes from what Margaret tells me to do, but uh, I spend a lot. Of, I spend a lot of time uh, speaking and traveling. Uh, uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and uh, in fact, did 
two last night and then going to go to Cherokee uh, tomorrow for fundraisers for summer football camps for the FCA. Oh, that's excellent. And you and I actually, we were a part of the Belk Bowl breakfast years ago when, when you spoke. And so you're, you're a wonderful speaker. What what type of uh, kind of messages these days ha- have been on on your heart that you've, you've wanted to, to share at these different events? Well, I'm just concerned about our young people. Uh, mm. we, you know, when well, I'm going to use the word we grew up, we all had a lot of heroes. I don't know who the heroes are today. Who who would you like to be like? Pick pick a uh, person, male or female. Uh, I'm not a proponent of this pro uh, players moving and all that stuff. I, you know, I, when I in my path of growing up through sports, not just football, it was preparing you for life. And now then, if you don't like it or something's going wrong, it's pretty easy to move on. And I, I see that happening in. Uh, maybe staying in college and or decide to do something else. Um, a family things, uh, uh, your your obligation or your challenge as a husband as a father. I just think those things are getting not getting ch- uh, challenged enough. I'm right there with you. And and as you think back, even throughout your career as a as a coach, were there some players that come to mind when? You know, maybe they had a, st- a tough start to their career, and and maybe in today's world, just like you're talking about, they would have left. But because they stuck around and because they grew and developed, by the time they were juniors and seniors, they had a great opportunity and and ended up having a you know a successful career. Well, I'm gonna have a plug for FCA again. Uh, when I started my college coaching career, I I, I got been cut by the Dallas Cowboys and. My high school coach called me, and I coached in Corsicana High School in Texas for three years. And I went to SMU, and uh, Hayden Fry was a head coach, and he had coached me at Baylor. And I'd been there a couple of years, and I wasn't much older than a lot of the players. And they, that was when the FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, really became prominent. And the players uh, asked me to – they wanted a huddle group and had need to have a huddle leader. And I kept making excuses. I was too busy. We had a family, different things as traveling, recruiting. Uh, and then uh, they, that went on for about a year. And then finally I, I said, I'm, I'm going to do what these players want to do. And I'll always remember those players. Mm. And then uh, I went to my first Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, summer conference at Estes Park, Colorado. I met Tom Osborne, who I usually uh, later work for. But uh, uh, those are the, the players that I remember. And, and, and now, fast forward 30 or 40 years, to Appalachian State, uh, one of the highlights of my coaching career was uh, in the locker room uh, at, uh, in Chattanooga. And we're getting ready to play Northern Iowa for the national championship. And uh, uh, I'm sitting there close to the door, and our, our locker rooms in Boone were down the hall. And it, we, but anyway, the, the the door was cracked a little bit, and I heard one of the players, ESPN was going to introduce our team at seven minutes to kick off, hmm. and I heard one of our players reading from a Bible. And I cracked the door a little bit and looked, and it's Nick Cardwell, and uh, he, I mean, he's walking around that locker room reading from Second Samuel's twenty-two when David's preparing and getting ready to go to battle. And I walked by and I patted him on the butt and I said, I said, Nick, that's awesome. He said, coach, we've been doing that all year. Wow. And now then they're doing it at Cincinnati, uh, Louisville, uh, Georgia State, and they're still doing it. Uh, Miller Gibbs did it the last two years here at Appalachian. And it's just a tradition that, that, that I'm proud of for them, but because it touches lives in that locker room. Amen. Oh, I love that. Yeah, Nick Cardwell. He's a, he's a friend of mine, and, and thrilled for him and what he's doing at, at Cincinnati. So uh, that's a good that's a good story. So and, and and as you think back to and 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 also looking at where App is is now, the 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 faith culture that you helped develop at App that has now continued. When you reflect back on that, how did you establish? that faith culture within the coaches as well as within the players. 
Well, it'd have to start off with me getting fired. <laughs> I was fired at Texas Tech. We had we had five losing seasons. We lost 18 ball games in five years by less than a touchdown. So now I'm out of coaching. I could have gone to Clemson, gone to Auburn, and a guy in uh, Dallas asked me to work for him. I go and I spent a lot of time in Atlanta, and I was miserable. And I, it was just a, it was a great opportunity for me, but I was miserable not coaching. And they called me from uh, Appalachian State, and I'm not an App State guy. I'm an Appalachian State guy. And so <laughs> anyway, uh, he called me, and, and, he, and uh, this was my interview. He said, you haven't made a difference in anybody's life in a year. And so I, my, I just, that touched my heart. Mm. I came over here, and, and uh, it, it, it's been a just a lot of I went to First Baptist Church in in uh, Atlanta, Doctor Stanley's church, and uh, and I'll always remember a prayer. And we started every season standing on that A in the middle of the field, first day of two a days. And I've had coaches say, "You gonna pray that pray today, coach?" And it was it was that if you if God's not right in the middle of it, I pray for it to be a failure. Mm. And 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 so. That would raise some eyebrows, but we just we had great just players. I mean, they were had a great. I don't I'm not talking about physically. They were good physically, obviously, but just a big heart and mind, and and they loved uh, the challenge of doing what we were doing. Uh, we we had a. I didn't come here and take over a poor football team. I came and took over a football team that had had some really special coaches, Mac Brown, Sparky Woods, and they, they had recruited well. Uh, and I didn't want to mess it up, I guess is the best way to word it. Oh, that's no, that's awesome. I, I love hearing that. And, 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 and I know it was, it was actually featured on college game day recently when, when they talked about the, the weekly coaches bonfire. That, yeah. that you helped uh, <laughs> establish for, for those that maybe didn't catch that, that feature or aren't familiar with, with what that was all about. Can you share the story behind that? Sure. I'd love to. When, I, when Margaret and I came to Appalachian, we, we, she taught fifth grade in blowing rock and we had an apartment there and it is a local doctors. They were, uh, had a brother here, but uh, uh, Dick Furman and Lowell Furman were both doctors and Lowell has passed since then, but, Dr. Furman and I became really close friends and he's had a, got a beautiful home off the parkway with a cabin down in the woods. And he told Margaret and I, we'd be welcome to stay in that cabin in the summer. And if it might be too cool in the, or cold in the winter. So, but we got down there and we loved it. And, and uh, one night we, we had beaten Furman. We, it was a big ball game and, we took all the staff to eat here locally in Boone. And I got down to the cabin about 10 o'clock and little, the crank phone in the cabin rang. And it was Dick. And he said, uh, what, are you, what are you doing? I told him we just finished up. He said, let's go down to the pond. And we sat on a pier down there for, oh, till one o'clock, just talking and finished it with prayer. And then that's when the, the bonfire started. And it was just just coaches and any coach was welcome. We didn't we didn't uh, ostracize anybody that didn't come. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was just a we did it every Wednesday. They're still doing it right after practice. Uh, some of us showered, some of us didn't. We came out and we had the fireplace, our fire logs all stacked. And uh, different coaches, it was their responsibility. To, uh, in fact, one of the coaches was my son, Chris. One year, he was responsible for the fire. Next year, Dale Jones was responsible for the fire. And it just passed on. And it's, it's just a rich, rich tradition with the Appalachian coaches. But now with the advent of, uh, of uh, these grad assistants and uh, quality control guys, instead of eight or nine, There'd be 25 or 30 coaches there on Wednesday night. And we Powerful. so blessed because we got Samaritan's first here in town and Franklin or the, the, the high powers to be the real power is uh, we have speakers. Uh, Dr. Jeremiah spoke, his son played for us. Uh, 
and then just different people that are on the scene, uh, and we'd all look forward to Wednesday night. And then sometimes it'd just be an old coach talking. Ah, uh, that's powerful. Wow, that's that's the that's the culture of App State right there. So that's uh, that's neat from the coaches coaches down. Well, I, I want to talk. We'll talk more more faith and and specifically some some things going on in in your life. But but I do want to talk about an event coming up that that you're involved with. And it's the the third annual Coaches Invitational coming up May 19th and 20th. And, and it's bet- benefiting high country caregivers. And you've been on the board since 2019. And, and so, Coach, tell us how you got involved and and and, and how people can, can get excited about this event coming up. Well, we've gotten involved by Margaret knowing the, the other women in the, that are involved and uh, they, then we were asked to be on the board, and for a year I'd sit there and scribble football plays when during a board meeting, and she had taken notes and knowing what was going on. And then we had a incident where we had a Christmas deal where the the, the little children would put their sick their list together what they'd like for Christmas, and I saw the children they had big bags full of toys and presents and. And one boy, and he's probably seven or eight years old, his comment was, and then on his little sheet, that all he wanted for Christmas was a new pillow. Mm. And I took when I heard that and saw that, that's what I've tried to use to help recruit coaches to come play mm. and people to come play and to be a part of it. We started this at the, the golf tournament. Everybody's all souped up about it. We're playing at Blowing Rock, which is one of the nicest clubs up here. Foggy, foggy all day long. We were afraid we we're going to hit each other. It's a <laughs> terrible day. And then, and then the, the next year, it was beautiful. And the, the, now the people are calling us to play in the golf tournament. We've gone from one golf course now to two. Elk River and Blowing Rock are both involved in our golf room we gave a two full outings of, of it's just grown and grown and grown and 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 you know it's just it's uh it's just been an awesome experience and if you're if i weren't coaching this is what i want to be doing wow well that's great and and man appreciate your involvement and and so it, again it's called high country caregivers and it's a, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to relatives, respite, and resources for kinship caregivers. And, and so we've got a link in our show notes where, where you can uh, figure out how if you want to be a part of this event, how you can support it, and uh, go play co- uh, golf with, with Coach and a bunch of other coaches that will be uh, a part of this event, some former players, athletes kind of across the board, former basketball players, some NC State guys. Uh, and, and so coach, I don't know if you want to mention a couple of those names that will be a part of this golf tournament, but, uh, but it should be a really special, special day. And so sponsors get to play with them and, 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 you know, interact and all that. So it's a lot of fun. Well, I think, I think that one of the big things was the first tournament when Mac Brown was, uh, the leader, Mac had been at Appalachian, he'd been here and then uh, Oklahoma and Texas and then back to North Carolina and, his name itself and, and the kind of person that he is, not just his name. He lives, he's, Mac Brown's as good as he gets as far as a person is concerned, his family. But uh, it's been fun. And then uh, Sparky, you know, took over after Mac left here. And uh, Paul, one of my biggest enemies was Paul Johnson. He was at Georgia Southern. <laughs> and we, we played a lot of golf together during the summers when we were coaching against each other. And now Paul, he's going to be the keynote speaker this year. That'll be oh, interesting. That's good. Oh, uh, that's great. I was actually, I was, I was at an event yesterday and somebody was wearing a Georgia Southern shirt. And so I had to give him a hard time. So uh, that, that rivalry continues, but, but glad to hear you and uh, you and Paul Johnson uh, are friends and he'll be a part of this uh, uh, event as well. So uh, great respect for him. Great respect. That that's neat. Well, so there you go. That's the that's the upcoming uh, event, and I'm I'm looking forward to to being at the dinner and uh, being a part of that. And and so, coach, as we uh, as we we got to get back to to talking a little football here on the on the show. Um, I don't know about you, but so for me, just as a as an alum and as a an App State fan, I uh, I end up talking about the App Michigan game 
at least weekly, sometimes daily. And I was just talking about it the last couple of days. But but for you, what do you like for people to know about that win, that App State over Michigan win? What do you like them to know? Just a challenge. And uh, the preparation for it was so unique. Uh, and it all started back in the off season. We were in our indoor workouts in, in February, January, February, in March, and then uh, spring practice. And because we knew about it, in, in uh, we were watching uh, tapes of our morning workout, and the associate AD uh, Jay Sutton knocked on the door and said, "Coach, uh, Michigan just called. And they want to play." And I told him, I said, "We we'll play them. Don't don't worry about anything. Don't just accept it. Tell them we're going to play." And it was almost like the next day, uh, it, it was just an awesome experience to watch the preparation of these players. And, uh, you know, it, it came down to the last three seconds. And, you know, I, I see baseball college World Series and basketball World Series and all of the stuff like that, and they'll lock arms or they'll turn their helmets around sideways. You know, on the sideline, I stand there like I, I always do. I got my arms crossed like that, like a just <laughs> like a dummy standing there, and and, uh, and back back behind me, there was just an echo. We'll block it. We'll block it. We'll block it. And Corey Lynch, who had blocked several in practice, I was worried about us being able to get the ball off. And uh, it, uh, you know, you. you it's, it's so special, and those players, uh, they've they've lived it. And and the people, I tell you, the, the people up here, the fans up here, and maybe weren't even a fan really till then. But uh, it's that that win will always be cherished here, and uh, it was so much fun to see the excitement and this. You know, you almost have to have been in that huddle, that prayer huddle. We do that after every ball game, win or lose. And this one was really, really special. I wow. mean special. Gosh, that's that's amazing. I, I always love reflecting back. And I was in the crowd with my grandpa and uncles and brothers and dad. And it's uh it's one of the greatest days of my life. So I'm I'm glad to glad to relive it. That's for sure. Thankful to, well, to I have mentioned been there. Corey, and there was everybody on that team made a difference. I mean, we, we ran the football against them. We were, we handled the clock running the football. And that's an old lineman that no, nobody ever even says anything about them. That's a good point, especially with the, the size advantage that, that Michigan yeah. had to be able to run against them. Gosh, yeah. it, amazing. Well, for, for you personally, what was that experience like at that stage of your career to experience that kind of notoriety? Because – their App State was, you know, a, a successful program. You were doing an awesome job to then get to that level of people talking about you and talking about the program. What, what, was, what was that like for you? I just told them no, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I, I had the opportunities to meet ADs and maybe an athlete, a transfer or somebody at different airports and stuff like that. We didn't, didn't fly into Boone, but – Flew into other places, and I, I think by then, Margaret is. It wasn't just me, but our family, Margaret and I, and our family were, we were, we became, uh, Boone people, Appalachian people. And it's kind of a side note. They everything now appears App State, and uh, when they when they offered me the job, the guy told me it hadn't made a difference in anybody's life. They put me in a little office. And told me, how, taught me how to pronounce Appalachian. This is Appalachian, Lash, Appalachian. And now then, it's all that says App State. But not me. I'll even correct them in a banquet. I'll say it's App State, not App State, it's Appalachian State. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm with you. Absolutely. Well, all right. I, I, I know that we've we've already heard a little bit about about your faith, and I know how important faith is to you. And and one of those those keys, because I, I heard you speak at a church years ago, and, and talking about this, is your daily reading routine, getting into God's Word. And so, 
take take us into that the, the commitment of that and 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 what that that daily routine looks like for you i tell you when we ask these questions my mind starts working it a lot of this started when i was at arkansas hmm. we we're getting ready to play texas a&m for a conference championship and uh, ken hatfield the head coach had been at air force and he had a speaker come in named cleve mcclary and cleve spoke that night and he's, he lost half a platoon in Vietnam and an eye and an arm. And he walks out the side door with the full-dressed Marine, had that white hat folded under his, that nub arm. And his first words to our team at Arkansas was, I'd be dead in hell tonight if it weren't for a group of men just like y'all. Mm. I've never forgotten that. I didn't think I'd ever see Cleve again. One year later, well, I, well, I came to Arkansas, I mean, to Appalachian in March. In July the 4th, he was in Boone visiting Dr. Furman, the one that we started to get fire with. And then we began to get Cleve to talk to our team. It got to the point in the, in the years, the next four or five years, and even today, they can, the players will say, when's Cleve coming? When's Cleve's going to come talk to us? Was Cleve coming, and we've just built an awesome relationship with him. And uh, I tell you, it was getting kind of churchy here. What I'm talking about, but I'm not. I'm not ashamed or trying to cover it. Anyway, Jane Graham told me about I mean, a man named uh, R. V. Brown. He lives in Florida. He had spoke to the North Carolina State team. And I told her, I said, I'm not going to let him speak to our team because I've heard him. And so I, I just accidentally heard him on Focus on the Family. So he, I, we got him up here. He came in and he started talking to our team at night. It is incredible. And it's just, mm -hmm. It was like a Billy Graham thing. We had 56 players and one coach make a decision for Christ that night. Wow. So – this has been an awesome trip, an awesome journey for an old coach and kid from Bonham, Texas. It's it's uh, unbelievable almost. So you like to start your day reading Psalms and Proverbs. Is that is that right? Yeah, Cleve, I forgot about it. Cleve gave me that book. And it, at that point, it was called Words of Wisdom. And then he he's I've got a car full of them right now. But he changed the name of it. I don't know how you get to do that, but uh, he did it in a simple fire, always faithful. He gave me that book on the 4th of July. He called me on the 5th of July at my home. He said, Coach, have you read the 5th of, uh, 5th Psalms? I said, no, Cleve, I haven't, but I will. I, I intend to read it. The sixth day he calls me, he said, Coach, and he's still now he's going back to Paulie's Island in South Carolina. He calls me again. Have you read day six? I said, Cleve, I'm going to read it. I hadn't done it yet. <laughs> now then, day seven, Cleve calls. Same thing. I'm going to make an excuse. Day eight was the turning point. Psalms 40. Mm. And saying and in, in the Psalms 40, this is a short version of it says, I lifted you out of the muck and mire of where you are. And I've read Psalms and Proverbs almost daily ever since then. And that was in 1990, probably. That That's right. Well, well I appreciate your your servant's heart with that. And and as you, you talk about, yeah, the, the, the work that you're doing with high country caregivers, what, what is something maybe that you've kind of learned or noticed uh, just in, in, in experiencing that, that maybe you didn't realize before just what what people are going through in regards to needing that that type of care and and you know grandparents stepping in to those those situations when you're when you're in a role like i see us in and particularly jacob it's it's pretty easy to begin to judge people just by their settings and the, maybe the way their appearance and stuff like that and I'll, I'll, i've learned not to judge people by their appearance and or, or their income or things like that. you not till you know what's on their heart and what they're going through and that what they're i think another way to word all this is what are you willing to give up 
Have, what are you what are you really willing to give up? And the, the most people that I know that are successful at some point along the line, they were willing to give up everything that they have. And uh, that's the that's the cross that goes back to the cross right there. Amen. And what? Yes, yeah, so, so, that reminds me of the word surrender. So what does yeah. that what does that word mean to you and in your faith? Oh, the, the total surrender, the to totally surrender, and put. Uh, I've got a saying: Let the first moments of the day, when your heart's fresh, be given to God. Don't see the face of man till you've seen the King. And it's not mine. It's a guy named M. B. Meyer. Years ago, wrote that, and I taped that inside those books also. I forgot that, but. Uh, that's uh, Margaret and I both have got really nice habits. If you want to call them that I go downstairs, and I read my Psalms and Proverbs and, hmm. and at eight o'clock every morning, she goes over to the piano and she starts playing gospel music. Always how great thou art. Well, there's always the first one. And she closes with victory in Jesus. And she plays for about 25 or 30 minutes. I'm downstairs. I can hear her. Now I'm going to open the windows and the doors in another month where the people in our neighborhood can hear her play. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Well, well, you mentioned your wife, Margaret. How, how many years have you guys been married? And and give give our listeners today a, a key or an encouragement to, to stick with it in their own marriages. We had to run the dinosaurs out of our front yard. That's how long we've been married. <laughs> we've, been, we've been married 64 years. Oh, amen. That's amazing. So what's what's the secret? What's the key? Not being selfish. Just just having a caring about each other, caring, wanting to be an example. Uh, don't I don't you? There's a lot of men and women in the world that are past that I still don't want to disappoint. I've been blessed. Ah, uh, that that's neat. Well, and it's awesome too that you and Margaret get get to be a part of this together and. Um, and, and, and help the people in the, in the high country. And so keep up the great work with that. And, and, and so thankful to, to have you on this show today and, and just appreciate your example and the life you've lived and football is great, but what you, how you've acted off the field and, and all my interactions with you have always been such a treat and a blessing. And so, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you in a few weeks at the, uh, at the big event supporting the high country care and here rivers be great. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank y'all. Absolutely. There's coach Jerry Moore joining us here on the unpacking it podcast and encourage everybody to check out the link in the show notes and see how you can be a part of this wonderful event coming up on May 19th, the third annual coaches invitational uh, benefiting high country caregivers. Well, thanks so much for listening to today's show. It's been such a treat and an honor for me to, to talk to the the, the former head coach of App State football. He was the head coach while I was up there. It's Appalachian uh, State. Appalachian State. We got to correct ourselves as I yeah. wear, wear, wear my app, app shirt proudly. Uh, but but he's, he's Coach Moore. I'm Bryce Johnson. I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected. And through faith, I've been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well, and I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Unpacking It podcast. 